Hi everyone, today we have got a new book review. It's Anastasia Ellie Calderover's brand new release. It's called Exotica and it's got the same size, shape and format as her previous books. So if you've got Blackbird Song or Mysteria or any of the previous titles, this is uh, the exact same. So they will look perfect on the shelf together. As you can see, we've got left hand side spiral binding. And on the back, Anastasia always puts a very rigid, sturdy cardboard piece on the, the back so that we can lean on it. So if you sit on your settee and you call it like I do, and you always need to find like a big heavy book to lean on, you don't need to with this, you've got it built in. So let's have a look at the pages inside then. So if you're familiar with Anastasia's work, you will know that she does absolutely gorgeous, realistic portraits, usually female portraits, but there are a few male ones sprinkled in and that that's mixed in with different botanicals. So it's people and plants, people and flowers. That's Anastasia's main running theme across her books. Now, in previous books, I know people, including myself, have found it difficult sometimes to identify the plants and the flowers that Anastasia has drawn. And if you're someone like me who likes to try and do things quite realistically and look up reference photos and make it look like the original real plant, um, it's quite handy to be able to know what um, species the plant is. And if you're not very good at botanicals like I'm not, then you're not just going to know. So Anastasia is included with all of her books this time, this little postcard which once you finish with it, you can just use it as a print, display it on your desk or whatever you want to do. But on the back, it tells you exactly the types of plants and flowers that appear on each page. So I'm not going to try and pronounce all of these because <laughs> I think this is like their proper Latin name. It's not, you know, what we would know them as. And that means that you can just have a look at what page you're on. You can type it into Google. You'll get loads of reference images for colour palettes for that flower, things like that. So this is obviously page one. As I said, I'm not going to try and uh, <laughs> I'm not going to try and tell you what that is, but you can see them all there. So there we go. That's a really, really good, handy addition that Anastasia's done. She must have heard from people that they would like to know, you know, the key of flowers and plants and things. And she's made that change. So that's really good. So let's see what else we have. Again, see, I wouldn't have a clue what these are at all. I don't know if I've ever even seen these. And looking at the um, the thing, I've never even heard of them either. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't got a clue, but you, the images are absolutely stunning. The illustrations, as always, portraits from Anastasia are just gorgeous. And I love the fact that she puts in a little bit of very light gray scale shading around the shadowed areas just so you've got that sort of platform to, to start from you know where you're going to put your, your shaded colors and things it just helps out now on this one because we have an animal Anastasia has also put the name of the animal so you can see we've got magnolia flower and oriental cat so she's added the animal names on as well just in case there's any in there that you're not sure of and here's one of those with the male portrait as well absolutely gorgeous page you know you can imagine doing something like this around Valentine's Day or any time but you know it's it's always nice when you've got a couple on a page to um to make it like a Valentine's Day colour along or something you know and we've got this one which this looks like a cactus not a cactus um a succulent of some sort uh, according to this it's Hawth Hawthoria again I'm not going to try because and... <laughs> I'll make a right mess of the names but yeah, gorgeous hairstyles, different positions as well. So you can colour the side on view of somebody, the full face portrait from the front. You know, there's all kinds of different positions and things that she's got her characters in. And then also the hairstyles are really unique and different as well. So on the card for this page, this is called a red parrot. So you can look those up, see what you think. And... Yeah, this is lovely. So you've got hands to practice on as well. Really big, bold eyes that you can, you know, really try and get all the flicks of colour in the irises as well. This is gorgeous. So we've got this lady um, with butterfly wings, I think. They look like butterfly wings or moth wings. And 
they're completely translucent so i just i would love to see how people tackle this and color the translucent wings while still being able to see the skin underneath absolutely gorgeous and these i believe are lilies uh yes they are <laughs> that's on the list now this is interesting because it looks as though this is some kind of slug let's see what's said about this one so if that was the lily it would got to be on number nine and I can't, I can't read that. I'm not sure what that is. I'd have to look it up, but I'm seeing coral in her hair. So I'm thinking it's an underwater thing. So I wonder if this is like a sea snail, maybe. And here's the one from the front of the book. So you can take your colour inspiration from there if you want to. And these are apparently clematis. I can say that one. <laughs> oh, and here's the one that I did. I didn't think it was this near into the book but this is the one that I coloured and this is apparently a black cockatoo but I wanted him to have gorgeous bright green properly exotic feathers so I changed him from the standard cockatoo to, to this kind of more parrotish um, colour palette but I wanted to make the subject's hair sort of tie in with the feathers from the cockatoo so that's what I did and there is another cockatoo here. You can just about see the lines where I've not covered it quite properly, but I did. I just wanted the one on his shoulder, and I did. To be to be honest, I didn't want to colour another cockatoo. I just wanted it to be him and his counterpart. So I thought I'm going to paint the background red, and I think it's turned out really well. I chose red because I wanted it to be a proper pop of contrast. And as you know, green and red are on the opposite side of the colour wheel. So they're going to properly clash and create that pop. And yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, I really enjoyed doing it as well. And the paint that I used, if you don't know already, I've been introduced to this gorgeous paint by um, Barbara and Suzanne. And it's called Le Franc, Le Franc Bourgeois, I think. <laughs> Le Franc Bourgeois uh, Flash Paint. It's an emulsion paint. It is so smooth. I cannot describe to you how smooth and consistent this paint is. It just lays down like an absolute dream. And I actually found out about it for the black paint first because I saw people painting their black backgrounds and they were using this. So I bought the black first. And before I tried this, I tried the black 3.0 from Culture Hustle and this was absolutely terrible. Now, I can't make that as a blanket statement because maybe I got a bad batch or something. I don't know. But this cost a lot of money and it was really, really awful for me to lay down. It was very clumpy and just horrid. So when I discovered this from Suzanne and Barbara, it was like night and day. So if you're looking for something that will, you know, quickly fill in a background or just something that's really opaque and comes in about 70 different colours, which I now need all of them. <laughs> um, you can go and look for that. So I've actually bought a black, a white, and then the three, oh, the three primary colours. So I've got red, blue and yellow because I'm going to try to make my own colours. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've not tried that yet, but I will. And I'm really excited too, but I just wish I had my hands on all of the colours. There's so many. But I think these are about a tenner to buy. So like £10. And the black 3.0 was about £35. Now in this, does it say how much you get? I think it's 35 mil, if I'm remembering right. And these are 125 mil. Maybe I'm not remembering this right then. This must be more than that. Let's say... 250 it doesn't tell you on here you would think that it would but I'm pretty sure you get more paint in this but there you go anyway that was my little tangent off into the world of flash paint I'll leave a link in the description for you if you want to have a quick nosy at all the colors that they've got but it is absolutely fantastic right let's continue <laughs> so next page uh, these are these again they're very much like succulent type plants aren't they they've got those rounded long leaves that succulents have but look at this gorgeous portrait just with the hands loosely clasped and this one is awesome because the plants are actually her hair <laughs> she's got no hair anywhere on here it's all plants and again it's not one that I can pronounce but this is so cool like I, I want to see all the different colourways that people decide on this page. You know, what colour? Is she going to have green leaves for the hair? Are they going to be rustic brown, very autumnal leaves? 
who knows this one is gorgeous so this is clearly an underwater one we've got the whales i think what kind of whales are they i don't know if they're humpback or sperm or what kind of whale they are but anyway absolutely gorgeous you can see that the whales are just just skimming through her hair the hair's floating in the in the water it's absolutely gorgeous i love it it's stunning and then we've got a really nice thick braided hairstyle here and we've got a little beetle i wonder if it tells us what this is i don't think so we've got a little beetle i can imagine that being colored very um almost metallic looking you know like the green gold kind of beetle very shimmery shiny beetle um i can imagine it looking like that and yeah again gorgeous very expressive eyes huge pupils and then this one it's like covering the one eye i don't know what flower this is it is on the list but i can't pronounce it <laughs> so yeah again different hairstyles to do if you like portraits you're not going to go far wrong with an anastasia book because it's they're all so unique and you just think where does she get all her ideas from but yeah it's incredible i believe that this one must be the Rita's Rita's butterfly it looks a bit more like a moth but unless I'm reading these wrong I think that must be the butterfly and again these different clothing as well when they're not naked they have all kinds of different clothing that you can practice on so all these ruffles that would be really good practice beautiful beautiful one here now this plant that she's holding looks quite dangerous. <laughs> um, I think if I'm on the right one, it's this one, which almost says the word staple, which these look like staples. They look like you'd really cut yourself picking it up. But I wonder if it's one of those flowers that has a really pungent smell. It just seems to me like something that would kind of release uh, uh, quite a nasty scent, but it might be the complete opposite. Maybe that's why she's looking so blissed out when she's giving it a sniff, I don't know. <laughs> this is again, gorgeous. I'm just trying to figure out what this one is. I haven't counted the pages and there's no numbers, so um, no, I'm not sure. Obviously some kind of bird. But um, we've got chains here. We've got lots of jewellery, so you can practice your metal colouring. And I really like this headscarf as well. If you don't want to do like a lot of hair, it makes a nice change. Now here we have another male portrait, again, underwater. So this, I believe, is the Nautilus. So I think we're on this one, number 20. And we've got... They kind of look like squid. Maybe they are kind of squiddish, but then the Nautilus is the one in the shell, isn't it? And he's got some lovely braids with, um, I don't know what these are, little, almost like little earrings in his hair. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, gorgeous. And I do love to see a male portrait. It's not often that you see them. So again, this is looking very succulent-ish. I believe that the succulents might have been a bit of a theme for this particular book I could be wrong again these look very similar to those previous flowers that I said about them having an odor and this is wow look at the hair here so she's got a braid coming over the top and then all of this huge bulk of hair here with lots of braids coming out of it it's so interesting I just would love to know where she gets her ideas I really would and what's this um I'm not sure there's some kind of bird but again it's all latin names so maybe it's this one so we've got some little birds again with the what are they called <sighs> succulents again with the succulents and i have seen succulents before in anastasia's book so it's not a new thing but i feel like there's more in this book than usual okay what have we got we've got dreads look at this I don't think I've ever coloured dreads. That would be a really cool project to try and do. And I just wonder what the flower is on this. It looks almost like a cabbage leaf, but I doubt that it is. <laughs> but again, beautiful expression. And look at this little jewel as well. It's the little things that make these portraits because there isn't a huge amount of things going on. It is literally just a person and some plants or a person and an animal. So the little things make all the difference. 
These are lovely. Look at these just embedded almost like a crown in her hair. The paper as well, by the way, is the same as you will have experienced if you've already got an Anastasia book. And if you haven't, it's quite thick. It's got, um, I would say that it feels smoother more than it does rough. It's not got like a really deep tooth or anything. But as you can see with my page, I could layer up on that skin time and time and time again. And it was working absolutely fine. So I feel like it's got like a hidden tooth. <laughs> you know, when you get those books and it feels smooth and you think, oh, goodness, is it going to let me use my pencils on this and layer up? And then it does. And you think, I wonder how, because it feels so smooth. But obviously there's a grain in there that we're not aware of, like a micro grain or something. <laughs> and um, yeah, so where was I? Yeah, we've got lots of leaves on this one. And then here again with the shell. Is this a Nautilus shell? I don't know, but it's lovely. It's got little flowers on it and almost growing around it as well. This is a really nice one. Gorgeous portrait. Oh, and it's the last one. So is it? Yeah, it's the last one. So this is called Lotus. So these are obviously Lotus flowers. I think I knew that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's stunning. I, there's nothing really that changes about Anastasia's books in the way that you describe them because all of her artwork is absolutely incredible. She never runs out of ideas. None of her books ever feel like filler, you know, um, as if she's run out of things to, to draw um, or the quality's downgraded or anything like that. They're all as beautiful and as incredible as the previous one. So if you're a big fan of Anastasia, you're going to want this book anyway. If you're not, I hope that looking through it has given you a little bit of food for thought. If you're someone who wants to get into portraits, um, colouring them, you can't go far wrong with this. Like I say, you've got all of the areas of shadow to help you get started and they're all they're all stunning. So, yeah, link to buy will be in the description. In fact, I believe you have to email Anastasia. I think that's the way it usually goes. And she sorts out all of the parcels and the shipping herself personally so I'll leave all the details in the description anyway and I'd love to know what you think of this edition and um, I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire